So I think it's a really exciting time for neuronic consumers because we're having more and more therapies. Um, unlike pretty much any other cancer, our therapy options in the last five years have really exploded, which is fantastic. And we're hoping, um, obviously, that this translates to better outcomes for our patients, both quantity and quality. So their quality of life is still very, very important to us as well. So we have no trials yet to help us define how we sequence these therapies, right? So what do I give first and why? Um, so in the absence of clinical trial data to show me that this is what I should definitely do, we have to use that art of medicine more, I think, than any other cancer. So um, my personal preference in terms of that clinical practice, and I think what sort of parallels the NCCN guidelines, is that, um, again, it's about quality and quantity. So very often our first-line therapies, if you will, what I call our first-string players, uh, would be spadostatin analogs. And that's because it really does do a wonderful job at controlling the cancer um, with pretty minimal side effects. I mean, every therapy has some potential side effects, but, um, you know, it, it probably is the best tolerated on a, when you look at trials. Um, as compared to some of the other therapies that we have to offer. Now having said that, again, the, the so-called targeted therapies that are now approved are also very exciting. And when patients progress in those somatostatin analogs, really offer us another opportunity to control that disease for even longer. Um, so we now have uh, Everlimus, which is FDA approved for the so-called pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, as well as the non-pancreatic lung and GI nets, which is really exciting. Um, and again, generally speaking, we use that as a second line therapy after somatostatin analogs. Um, for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, we have sutin as a targeted therapy, we have cytotoxic therapies, and then across the board we now have PRRT as a potential option at least, I should say, for the mid-gut carcinoids based on the NETR1. So it's not yet FDA approved, but that's also another exciting therapy we could use where that comes into play in terms of sequencing of therapy remains unknown. I think most of us worry a little bit about the potential longer term toxicities of lowering the blood counts and we wouldn't want to sort of prevent us from using a therapy um, if the counts are too low. So I think many of us will probably wait a little bit to not use that up front. Um, but again, it remains to be seen where exactly PRRT should best be placed um, because the, the study itself was so exciting and the results were great.